Okay, folks. It's the end of the day. My buddy just left. He's on his way home. So I'm going to try to go in and do a solo hunt in the evening up in this area where we saw birds uh, the first morning but kind of got busted by another hunter. I don't know how many people have been in here, but either way, maybe I'll get to roost them. And the only way I can use the new camera and do a solo hunt because of the weight of the new camera is I have to attach the, the camera right here. So the camera will be right next to me so I can support the full weight of it. But that means I get one shot only because there's no way to eject the shell and reload. <laughs> so rather than use my old camera, set this up with the new one that's videoing right now so I can't show you, but I'll take pictures if this works out later. And I'm not sure what will go wrong, if anything will. I mean, maybe the new camera can't handle it. Maybe it'll break the lens. I don't know. I made sure I bought an extended warranty, though, <laughs> since we abuse things hunting. But I am going in. Gonna give it a whirl. All right. I'll tell you, if anybody has one of these at home, I'll buy it from you. There is nobody else anywhere making a simple mount with movement in here to allow it to spring with the camera instead of giving it a total jolt that can attach to a gun and actually hold the kind of camera I want to use. Because all these other little cameras that, that are out there, they just don't do it compared to an actual quality camcorder. And uh, I just want the quality, so. See what happens, I'm gonna give it a whirl. It's too heavy to touch and do anything afterwards, but once it's on there, it's on there. I'm going to try to stick it on at the very last second. So, more to come from there. Let's see. to my car, just hanging out in Spokane. <laughs> oh yeah, it's tough in Montana. Hey, good morning everybody. I think it's morning. Yes it is, it is. 5.15. <sighs> well, last night didn't work out. I didn't bother turning the camera back on because it just and the birds never came in. I have no idea where they went. Birds out here are totally different than what I'm used to back in Washington. Even though we're just over in Montana. I mean, once you get one on a leash like uh, like yesterday, they're like any other bird. But finding them is the hardest part because they're so far and few between. I mean, you can walk for miles and stuff that just cries out, wow, this is fantastic turkey zone and you'll never see a bird or even a sign of a bird or scratch or anything and then suddenly all of a sudden you'll find a bird somewhere and it'll be a bird <laughs> i haven't even seen a pile of birds together i mean that valley we were in yesterday or i called that bird from i mean it goes for miles and miles it's beautiful food everywhere pasture everywhere water going down through the middle of it you would think you would have heard gobbles ringing out from the mountains at least back in washington it would have been probably 20 different toms up through that entire zone and we heard one bird and I called him in and killed him <laughs> so I mean I guess those are pretty good odds when you find one anyway I got permission um, signed permission that you can get over here in Montana when I have private land that people have 
allowed hunters to come in on. There was a guy in on there yesterday. We went by it, looked at it. Shane's gone. He's home. I'm out here by myself. Anyway, <clears throat> so I'm going to go in on it because Shane did scope this piece of property uh, a week before and he saw five long beards on it. Uh, that's like jackpot, but I'm sure it's been pressured already. But I took some time and looked around and I'm pretty sure I found a roost area and I found scat on the ground, bird poop that was like brand new fresh and you can see they're walking across the road to a place where another guy is feeding cattle and I'm guessing that's their morning run. So I'm throwing a needle on a map basically and I'm just going to set up on it. I won't even probably be able to call. This is trying to catch fish in a barrel basically if they're there. If they're not there then I guess I'll go look for another bird somewhere else. If they are there and they're not right where I'm going to set up then I'll try calling and see if I can locate them. But it's obvious they're there because bright green fresh poo everywhere on the ground. So the camera comes back on because it's attached to my gun. But between now and then, this is it because I'm gonna have to sneak in there in pitch dark, set up, and freeze my butt off until it's light enough to know what's going on. So I won't be turning it back on unless there's a bird goblin. See ya when it happens, if it happens. <laughs> Going in. Day three, Montana. Whew. I think I found them. What do you think? It's a gaggle. I'm sure it's a farm full of pressure too. Be interesting. There's no way of knowing whether they'll come this way or not. There's a lot of different birds behind me too. There's only a few out in front of me. There's got to be at least. Eight times, maybe more. Hard to say. Isolated one really, really big bird out in the distance. And I got in there to, to try to see where he was roosted. He's in a tree out in the middle of a field. <laughs> Go figure. got one shell. Typical farm birds. I'm sure they're full of pressure. <laughs> A lot of younger birds. It's going to be hard to figure this out. Side of that. 
the side of that hill is wide open. There's no way to get near these birds if they're on the middle of that field. Him. He's on. He wants to come so bad. But he's strutting around right there. He wants me to come down. Hold it right there. 
terribly. He wants me to come so bad. There he goes. He wanted to come. And he wanted me to step over. He didn't want to show himself. Okay, change spots. Tried to get out in front of him. Man, what a beautiful scenery though. Back corner of this field is full of tracks. It's got a couple a second ago, so I think they're moving in this direction. Let's see what happens here.
Oh, one shot down. And we are tagged out. And what a spectacular setup. Oh, yes. Oh. Praise the Lord. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the gun not worked. Yes. Nice. 30 yard shot. Praise God. Thank you, Father. Amen. What a time. A time of patience. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know he wasn't the biggest bird, but I'm done. Oh man, I'm shaking like a leaf. Can you see the scenery? This is stunning. These are the birds I played with earlier. Oh. Yes. I don't even care. I could hear spitting and drumming for the last 30 minutes. And I'm just glad. You don't have to be the biggest bird, he just has to be a bird. And look at this view that I am in. I mean, this is just fantastic. I'm so stoked. All right, let me get this camera off. <laughs> oh, amen. All right, well, that was a lot of fun. I finally got a little bit of cloud here, so I might be able to talk for a minute, but it's been so sunny out, even though it's freezing cold. It's only about 25 degrees, but uh, I'm getting my mouth cold hanging it in my mouth like this but it works it works so you saw the other day how I was planning to attach this so I had one shot <laughs> one shot was all I needed uh, that was a nice easy 30 yard shot and I know the spread from doing a pattern test and TSS penetration like never before and I really enjoyed the replica decoy company's uh, decoy I gotta tell you life size is kind of cool I mean they're not much heavier than any other decoy I'd say even lighter than a lot of the newer ones that are out there today they give you a bag to, to uh, carry them around with metal stake to put them in the ground if you balance them right the wind will move them around but I had to go pretty quick let's see if I can do it just right nah, either way it will swing if you get the wind just right or I mean if you get the balance just right on it but they do a nice job. They'll paint them any way you want. You can go fully white-faced, you can go fully red, you can do whatever. They can make it more Merriam's, more Rio. So I told them what I wanted and they put it together for me and they did a great job. So nice, nice decoy. Bird, nice bird, no complaints. Three quarter spurs. Um, the beard was right at about seven and a half inches, which is pretty good from what I've been told from Shane, my buddy there. They came out with me, hey, look now, it's spinning. <laughs> uh, nice tail, but there's a lot of Rio in this thing. Uh, more Rio than Merriam's, but I don't know. It's getting harder to tell nowadays. I guess it's the same in Montana. But you look at the first bird that I took out, and that thing was white. Pure white tips, 
white everywhere, everywhere, and mouth is freezing cold. Like I said, it's only in the 20s, even though it looks warmer. But great bird. Uh, both shoulders are rubbed raw, and nice beard. Like I said, nothing wrong with that beard at all. And typical spurs earlier season, three quarters, thick, fat ones. I know he isn't the biggest bird that's in here. I heard much bigger ones, but when they both came out, I was happy to get it done right there. And I had to kind of wait a little bit because they were so close to each other at times. I'm sure you'll see that. And I had to shoot before they got to the hens or I would have had all of them. And they could have went right down over this hill. But what a beautiful setting and pff, everything I could hope for. I knew the hen was going to bust me. The sun broke open and was shining right underneath the trees where I was and was hitting me. She putted a couple times but then got comfortable because she wasn't sure what she was looking at. And I just stayed focused on the tom and I'm like, yeah, either one is fine. They look like brothers to me. So it was a good time. So now I got to pack up, heading home, back to Washington for the opener. Two days from now, three days from now. This got done a little faster. I had two more days, but I'm done and I'm happy. Working pressured farms is not a new thing. I've done a lot of that in the past. So don't talk too much, put yourself in the right place and just don't be aggressive. Because I think anything aggressive on a farm like this, where I know tons of people are hunting it, there's boot prints everywhere, and we saw trucks here the other day. Shane showed me this place, and I found the other place where I shot the first bird. So, Shane, when you get back in, you're going to have a good time here, because I got this figured out. I'm going to tell you exactly where to go. <laughs> and I'll tell you what's going to happen, because, you know, like all birds, they get into a feeding pattern. And uh, these birds definitely have a pattern, and it's very beneficial. So... I'll tell you everything, Shane. <laughs> Opening day is going to be fun in Washington. Heading out with another Shane, one of my guys uh, that, that I work with. He's in the military. It'll be his first time ever turkey hunt. Kyle and I are going. Shane gets the first shot. And after that, we got a lot going on with other people coming in from other states. And at the same time, there's going to be a lot of fun at the Veterans Turkey Camp from Hunt to Eat. And I'm going to be real happy being a part of that. Going to meet some new people, make some new friends, and have a lot of fun. So, hey, the wind's holding it up. I got to get out of here. Go break my camp, head on home, take a shower. <laughs> we have done some miles. So, enough for that. I'll see you in Washington. More to come. All right, we made it to opening morning. Yes, we did. Shane's the hunter today. Yeah, He's we'll the shooter. Say hi, Shane. How's it going, everybody? <laughs> Kyle's been here about an hour, I think. Yeah. <laughs> What's wrong? Are you afraid of being late for opening day or something? Well, technically, you two were late this morning. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs>